Right, so welcome back to a new guide on this channel, and on this occasion is the Volca Modular. This is not a review, it's a complete deep dive guide about this device. Now everything on this guide is in chapters, so if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. Now if you like all of this, please like and subscribe, and if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can. Uh, all the links are at the description. Right, so the modular has some pre-wiring behind the scenes, so you can get some sounds without even patching, you know, without patching cables. You just get something right out of the box. Now everything starts at the source, right here in this section. So what you get is two triangle waveforms. Now you only hear one, we can see it on the, on the oscilloscope, you only get one. And it's because the second one is the modulator and is in charge to modulate the first triangle, you know, the carrier. So the second triangle is the modulator and the first one is the carrier. So if I play something right here, we can easily see that triangle waveform. So then you have the other controls. The mod is going to be how much of modulation with the uh, modulator we're going to be uh, affecting the carrier. That's uh, why we get this mod. So if I play a key and I go up uh, on the mod, the carrier is going to be affected by the modulator, which is the second triangle that we have behind the scenes. And as we keep going up, it's going to, you know, it's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. Right, so that's pretty much what we are doing. And if you are wondering what the F are we doing right here, well, we, well, we are doing good old FM uh, FM modulation. Now, uh, on FM, when uh, the modulator is modulating the carrier, the ratio is really important. That's why you get the ratio. So this is like the uh, tuning for the modulator, you know, for the second triangle, the hidden triangle. So if I play it and I do some modulation moving the triangle, but moving the ratio is going to affect the modulation, right? Right. And I know it sounds super weird, but that's that's how it is. You can get really different tones. That's the you know that's the plan, right? This is the first part of the uh, source. You have your main triangle, your um, which is the carrier. Then you have your modulator that is going to be uh, modulating the carrier. And then you have a second stage, which is going to be the fault. So fault, it's wave folding. I'm going to, you know, not do anything on the modulation, on the modulator. I'm just going to get the, uh, you know, uh, maybe a triangle, just a triangle. And this one is going to be applying some folding, some wave folding. And as they keep going up, notice that the waveform will start to fold and fold and fold until we get that sound. Now this one got nothing to do with the mod and everything else, but this this one reacts on top of pretty much the whole thing that goes out of the uh, of the source section. So that's it. You have a carrier. You have a modulator. How much modulator? How much the modulator will affect the carrier? You can change the ratio, and then you have wave folding. It's just pretty pretty simple. And I know that you're here maybe to watch, you know, to learn about the patching. We are going to be getting there first. Uh, I'm gonna cover, you know, the whole signal path because you need to understand it, and then we are gonna dive into the in, into the patching section. So the source right here goes out to some place, and you can see the lines. It goes goes out from the source, goes down and then goes here and goes through this section so it's going to be going through this one which is going to be an a h r you know it's just an envelope an envelope generator so if i play something and the attack and the release is going to be all the way down right everything is down as soon as i go up in the attack and i play it again notice that it's a little bit slower now notice that it's like ramping up and it's not like just on and off when I play a key, it's just like slowly going up. Well, this is the attack. You're just adding a little bit of attack. Now, right now, when I release a key, it dies instantly. So, what if I wanted to, you know, add a little bit of release, a little bit of tail? And there you go. You add a little bit of release. And you are gonna be getting it. Maybe I'm gonna do no attack. Right? And if you go down on the on the release, as soon as I play a key and I release it, it's the, the sound is going to die. So this envelope will just pretty much control how the volume goes out of the uh, synthesizer. But it's a little bit special because this uh, has a very strong relationship with the LPG that we're going to be talking right now. 
So on traditional subtractive synthesis, we use a low pass filter, right? So we use a filter to chop the higher frequencies or maybe low frequencies it depends on the on the synthesizer. But right here, we don't get that. We have an LPG, which is going, is going to be uh, is going to be a low pass gate. So what the F is a low pass gate? You know, what's the difference between, a, a, you know, a low pass filter? So, uh, and I'm going to give you just, uh, you know, uh, blame, lame terms. I want to say lame, just easy terms. If you want to go to the web, type what is an LPG and you're going to find all the information. You can even build your own. All right. So uh, a, a low pass gate is like a combination of a low pass uh, filter and a VCA. You know, it's going to affect the, uh, the cutting and the volume. It's going to affect the loudness, timber and loudness. So it's going to be like cutting, but at the same time, it can go down in volume, in amplitude. And, uh, and it's a little bit weird because we are uh, highly used, I would say, to, uh, to work with subtractive synthesis and not so much with uh, low pass gates. Uh, but, you know, it's fine. It's uh, just a different thing. You know, it's not better, not worse. It's just a different thing. And it's just, you know, great. So I'm going to be going all the way down, all the way down on this ones. And right here, I'm not going to be adding attack, but I'm going to be adding lots of release. So when I play, you can see in the spectrum that we get some higher frequencies. You know, we get the fundamental tones, but we, we get the, the frequencies right there. We can see them. So what happens if I start chopping this, if I start, you know, going down? So this will do some cutting. As you will see, I'm going to be moving this and I'm moving this. And at some point, you are going to be seeing some cutting. But notice how everything gets affected, not just the higher part of the spectrum. And at some point, it's going to go down, really down in amplitude. This is how the low pass gate works pretty much. There's a little bit of cutting and, you know, it's just messing with the loudness. So uh, with low pass gates, what you need to know is that it's everything super reactive. And this is, you know, somehow it makes it sound a little bit more natural. So let's say I'm going to keep the release up, right? And this time I'm going to I'm going to be doing some folding and maybe going down in volume because it's just super loud. I'm going to go up in fold so we get a lot more harmonics right there at the top. You're just not getting a, a dumb, a dumb triangle. So when I, I go down in the cutoff, it's going to get affected again in a different way. Now I'm going to be playing something and I'm going to be doing something like this. I'm just going to tap it. And as soon as I do so, I'm going to go down in the cutoff. We're going to notice that as we go down, it's chopping, of course, it's controlling the loudness and the higher frequencies, but also it gets a lot shorter. So. You know, we get a lot less sustain and now it's going really down in amplitude. So it doesn't matter that the release right here is super long. As soon as they go down in the cutoff on this control, you know, the low pass, low pass gate is really affecting the length of whatever the code goes through it. So in this synthesizer, you need to remember that this is not a common low pass filter. It's a low pass gate. It's very reactive to the sound and it responds to the attack and the release that we have right here. This is why if you see the chart, it's going from here, it's going right there and enters the low pass gates. Then we have a we have a second one, which is this one. We're going to talk about this one in a minute. But this one right now is not doing anything. This is a secondary low pass gate that we get so we can use it when we use the pass patching, uh, you know, capabilities. So I'm going to be going all the way down in attack and then release. And again, we are just back to what we had from before. And notice that when I play it, the cutoff, the light of the cutoff, the low pass gate, is just telling you what is going on, right? When you, uh, when everything starts, when the sound goes in and it goes up in volume, and when I release it and the sound goes down, right? So with low pass get, gate, you really need to find the sweet spot right here. And all, everything depends on whatever you has, you have as a sound on your main source, all right? Okay, so now then uh, from the low pass gate is gonna go pretty much out, but before going out, and for now I'm just gonna remove the mod, it's just a little bit annoying. So I'm gonna be playing it, right? And I'm gonna be maybe opening this all the way. So then you have this one, you go, goes from the low pass gate to the reverb, and this one is called Space Out, and it's just a reverb. If I play it and go up, it's a nice reverb, you know?
Right, it's just a just a reverb. You can go all the way up and just get the full effect, or just do a tiny little bit. But this is going to be the final uh, part of the you know the whole the whole path. We have the source going to the envelope, the envelope going to the low pass gate, and the low pass gate going to the space out, and then it goes out you know of your synthesizer right here. All right, so that's it. You know, this is like an introduction. Now we need to talk about the main star of the show, which is all the ins and the outs that you get right here and the different modules that we get just to, you know, just to get the, some magic out of this device. Okay, so let's start with the patching madness. We are going to be uh, starting with the source, the old ins and the outs that you get right there. So the ins and the outs that you have right here, notice that the first ones that, you know, pretty much in a whole device, everything that has a blue right there in the background, has a background of blue, is uh, they are outs, not, not ins. And the other ones are ins. So uh, the first one is going to be the, imp the pitch, right? We can connect something there and just control the pitch. The second one is going to be this ratio. The third is going to be the fault. And the fourth one is going to be the mod. And then in the outputs, you know, the blue side of things, you have the uh, the first one is going to be the output of the modulator. You know, something that we are not able to hear. We can only use it to modulate the carrier from here. But we can get it out to some place and maybe reuse it for something else. And then the last one, it's going to be the carrier, you know, which is the sound, the main oscillator that goes out. Now, don't worry, I'm just not telling you something that you can you can see on the chart or in the manual. I'm just going to show you, I'm going to give you an example for all of them. Okay, so we have the A, the B, and the C, and we are going to be talking about, the, about the, them later. But right now, we can use it to figure out, you know, everything else. And we can use them as an attenuator. So I'm going to be connecting this to the A, and it's going to be the A right there. Right. OK, so now what we can do, we can connect it to something else. And then with this knob, we can go up and down in, in voltage and we are going to be able to listen whatever we are, you know, trying to do. So first, I'm going to be connecting this to the pitch. So if I play something and now I move this knob, notice how it's affecting the pitch of the oscillator. This is why that's the input of the pitch. We can connect maybe an LFO and, and maybe an envelope, whatever other source, and just modulate it then, you know, the way we want to. Right? Super simple. Now, the next one is going to be the ratio. So we can do the same trick. We connect something to the ratio and whatever, whenever we do folding, and you, I'm going to be going all the way down in the ratio so you can see it. I'm going to be playing it. Notice that going up in ratio, we are uh, we are getting this light on when I move this knob. So this is what it what, you know what it is is the input for the ratio. We can connect whatever we want right here, and we can maybe do an LFO and modulate the ratio. So it's doing something like that. All right? Again, just very simple. Once you get the idea of how this works, it's just you know pretty simple. Now the next one in the chain is going to be the third one. I guess I'm connecting this correctly. Yep. So the third one is going to be the folding and we can see the lights, you know, right there. I'm going to go down in, you know, mod and I'm going to be going up and notice that the fold goes on and off. Maybe we can do a little bit of folding and just go down and go up. And again, the whole point is that, is that we can connect something there and just modulated we can connect the sequencer we can connect the lfo the envelope generator everything you know anything we want right here that's the main point and the last one is going to be the mod this you know this control I'm gonna disconnect it maybe go down in the fault and i'm gonna connect it to the mod there we go and if i play it and i go up this light goes on i can go it down and go up in the mod on demand that's the main plan now again, all of this is just a very silly example that I'm giving you because we can control how this one goes up and down just by, you know, just using it like that with this attenuator. That we are pretty much doing the same thing. But I'm just showing you what the, you know, what they do or what, what the inputs are all about. And then, you know, then you can get your own conclusions and just connect different things there. Remember that you have two sources. You have a triangle, which is the carrier, and then you have a modulator, which is, you know, another triangle. But we cannot hear the modulator. We only hear the triangle that it's the carrier, the one that goes out. 
I'm going to give you a dumb example, but you know, at least we are going to be knowing, we, we are going to know how it works. So these ones are the outputs. Now we can use them whatever we want. But now what I want to do, I want to grab the first one, no, not the last of the outs, and I want to get, get the first one. This one is the modulator, is the waveform, the oscillator that we cannot hear, the one that is modulating the carrier, right? So we can get the sound out of that modulator and connect it directly out, maybe to the space out, and notice what happens. So we are bypassing everything on the chain, the envelope, the low pass gate, and even, you know, bypassing everything else. So we are connecting it directly to the space out, and then, you know, since we are not doing any space, any reverb, it just goes out, and it is, um, again, I'm not playing anything. It's a constant sound, and this is how it works. It's going to always emit a constant sound. Then, when it goes through the path, you know, through the envelope, the low-pass gate, the sound, you know, the volume goes up and down and so on. But we are bypassing all of this, and it's just going directly out of the synthesizer. So this is why we get the out. Now, I'm using it again, this is, this is a dumb example. We can connect it to some other places and reuse this as a modulator. But right now, again, remember this one is the modulator, so if I go up, I'll go up in mod, nothing is gonna happen because this one is, you know, modulating the carrier. And right now we are just not getting it. So, but if we modulate, uh, we move the ratio, we are affecting it indeed. Now the fold will not do anything because we are going directly out from that one. And the other one, this one, the second one, is gonna be the output of the triangle, right? It's just the triangle, it's gonna be the carrier. And that's it. So that's how it works, you know? We get the inputs and the outputs, so we can, you know, output it to some place else and use it maybe as a modulation, or maybe, you know, we could uh, output the uh, modulator to the first low pass gate and the carrier to the, uh, you know, to the other low pass gate, and we have a combination of, you know, both oscillators, which is, you know, something cool. All right, since now we know how this works, we can just move forward to the next section. Now, uh, all the examples I'm giving you are very simple, easy to understand examples. And this is because this is not a video where I show you how to create, you know, amazing sounds and sequences. I'm just teaching you how to use it and what all the ins and outs means and understand them. Now, if you go to the web, you can find a million places where you have uh, presets or patches for this, you know, patch sheets, so you can get amazing sounds. Now, if you want me to, for, for me to do this, maybe on a different video, just creating sounds and patches with this and pedals, you know, with effects, uh, let me know down in the comments, because this, you know, could be a really, you know, fun thing to do, you know, creating sounds with this, giving you a few patches and going maybe go maybe going out through a, a pedal chain with reverb delays and delays and phasers and all that and just getting you know cool sounds out of the Volca. Okay, so let's move forward to this one. This one is the rise and fall generator. So you can use it uh, as a you know generator to go to rise and then maybe fall, right? Just like an instruction, maybe like an envelope, but also we can use it as an LFO. That's the main um, purpose of this one. So you have a shape and you have a time. Now the shape is going to be uh, the main waveform that this will output. And it goes from a saw down all the way from to a kind of a triangle-ish, and then it goes to a saw up. And the time is going to affect how, you know, short the LFO or how, you know, how fast or how, you know, how slow is. So if it's a slow LFO or just fast LFO. Now, all of this is just very simple. The thing is that when we do something, this is not uh, within the signal path. This is something that we, it, it only works when we patch some connections. So we want to use this, and for now, maybe I'm gonna go to time about there, you know, maybe go all the way down on this one. I'm gonna go all the way down on both. So uh, we want to use this to modulate something. So these ones are gonna be your main outputs. Now you have a plus and you have a minus. Why do you have a plus and minus? It is because this can output a positive, a positive instruction or a negative instruction. So Again, we are just trying to modulate something. It's going to modulate up or it's going to modulate down. If you want to maybe modulate the pitch, it's going to modulate the pitch up or it's going to, you know, go down in pitch. It's just pretty simple. So this decides what, where you're going to go. So in this case, I want to modulate the pitch up. So I'm going to be connecting it right there in the plus. 
Now I need to connect it to some place so I can modulate something. Now since I want to modulate pitch because it's a very simple example, I'm just going to go to the uh, pitch which is going to be the first one of the source. Now as soon as I play something, nothing happens. And it's because the rise and fall needs an instruction in order to trigger. It has no idea when to start, when to start doing its job. So it needs some other piece of information that tells the rise and fall, dude, you need to begin doing your job. So it's going to be the first input that you get right here. So that one is going to be called the trigger. So this is going to trigger pretty much everything. Uh, so I'm going to be connecting whatever ca patch cable, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to be playing this and notice what happens when I touch it with my finger. So I'm sending a trigger with my finger, which is voltage at the end of the day. So I'm just sending a, tri a trigger with my finger and this is going up, really up in pitch. Right, so now the thing is that uh, we need to trigger this somehow. We can use maybe uh, the, the sequence, we can use a, a bunch of sources to trigger. Now, you can use it as an LFO. Now, that, you know, would be wonderful. So, right here, you get your third out. The other one is the minus. You would, instead of going up in pitch, it's going to go down. So, this one is going to ca be called the end trigger. Now, the end trigger, what it does is going to take uh, into account the time, which is the duty cycle of the, uh, you know, of the, of the LFO, the waveform. And uh, as soon as it is done doing its job, it's going to restart again. So, if we connect it here, and you're going to hear it right away and notice what, what's going on. If I connect it right here and add some, uh, some amount of time, I make it not super slow, but, you know, some, somehow slow, I'm going to be playing this and notice what happens. It's going up in pitch and going down, up and down, but it's doing it in a loop. So, this is because when we play, when, when we start, it's going to trigger once, right? It's going to do the first modulation of pitching up. So now the rise and fall will start entering into, you know, um, an infinite loop. As soon as it ends, it restarts and re-triggers and over and over and over again. So right now we are going up and down. What happens if I go down right here? Gonna be playing it is the opposite instruction. It goes down and up, down and up. Right? So again, this is the LFO. We can affect it. We can, with, if you go down, let me just maybe do it with this hand. If you go down in time, it's gonna get faster and faster. If I go to the other side, it's gonna be much slower. Now the shape really matters, because right now we are doing a rump down. Now if I move it to the side, now it's going to be more like a triangle-ish type of thing. If I go to the other side, it's going to just do the opposite. Right? Pretty, pretty cool. Alright, so I'm going to connect it to the plus, because I like it a little bit more. And uh, no reason at all. I'm going to connect it right there. So now we know that with this, we just can, you know, maybe, um, let me, let me, let me go down in time. Something like that. Okay. So now we know that we play it and it's going to affect the pitch in some fashion. Now you have other controls, which is going to be the second one and the third one. So the second one is going to be the control for the shape and the other one is going to be the time. And this is the same thing we discussed with the, with the source. We can patch in some other control and modify on demand the time and the shape. So right now I'm connecting it to the shape. If I move this attenuator, the shape is going to be changing. Maybe I just need to do a little bit less. Let me just go there. Now, if I connect it right here, even now that I think about this, it's going to be a little bit more, you know, a little bit more understandable. You can go all the way down and all the way up, pretty much. Notice I'm affecting the shape on demand with this control. That's the plan. What happens if we do the all, you know, go the other way? I'm gonna go and affect the time. Right? Right. So right now we are just, you know, affecting the pitch, but you can do whatever the F you want. Uh, you can maybe go to the second one, and if I play it, and again, this is what ha what's going on. It's affecting the ratio. So if you are doing some modulation, 
we are affecting the ratio the way we, you know, whatever, you know, whatever fashion we want. This one is going to be affecting the fault. Right? So that's pretty much it, you know, you have your, uh, you know, your positive, your negative, you have your end trigger, which is going to make it work like a NLFO, and then the, you have your trigger which is going to be uh, you know your trigger and then again it's going to be the sh the control the input for the sheep and the time right so now we need to talk about the ahd generator we already know what this does but we need to talk about the ins and the outs now if you didn't watch the rise and fall section i can i strongly recommend you to do it because uh, all the ins and the outs are going to be pretty much the same so if we take a look you know everything is just you know very similar the plus and the minus are the same as the rise and fall this is going to output positive uh, positive information or just negative you know information or modulation then we have the end trigger which is going to be the same so then at the top you have the gate now notice that there's a different in the icon right there so the rise and the fall what it uses is going to be a trigger so it needs a trigger in order to start operating right but it's need a trigger so a trigger is a is an impulse is a very short information now a gate is a little bit different from a trigger a gate opens and closes so for example if i play a key the gate it's letting the sound pass by opening the gate and then closing so it can sustain it can stay open so a gate is a little bit different than a trigger so they are not the same and it's the only uh, difference from the rise and the fall now the second and the third uh, you know the second and the third one are just going to be the attack and the release and just like we did before we can connect something there and just you know maybe if i touch it we can just modulate it with whatever we want maybe i'm going to be going to this and just going all the way down and all the way up we're just controlling the attack and the other one is going to be the release so as you can see it's uh, pretty much the same as the rise and the fall but how it works it's you know completely different because this is not a rise and fall or an lfo it's an envelope okay so let me give you you know just a few examples now the, the main key right here that you need to understand is that the trigger again is not the same as the gate the gate can stay open as long as you may you know keep it open uh, and the, the trigger is just you know it's gonna just a uh, trigger it's gonna open and close right away right here i'm going to be connecting maybe i'm going to use a shorter cable i'm going to be connecting the plus so i'm going to be modulating something positively right so what can we do well maybe we can go to the number four which is going to be i guess the mod right there right there let me see if i'm connecting it to the number four I'm a little bit, I'm not so close to the synthesizer. I'm right here and I'm just really far away. So it's kind of hard to see. So now we are connecting this, uh, you know, the envelope, the generator to the mod. And it's going to be this mod. So now what we want to do every time that we play it is going to modulate the mod up and down. So if I do attack and I release, a lot of release, I go up in the attack and the release, notice how the mod is going to be modulated. It's going to slowly go up and when I release it, it's going to slowly go down because we are using an envelope. So this is modulating that input, you know, the mod. Now also you need to remember that this envelope generator it's pre-wired to control the lpg so you're just doing both at the same time you're controlling the low pass gate and the mod that you're patching in right here now what happens if we go the other way i'm gonna go to the negative side of things notice is the opposite it's gonna stay really aggressive and when i play it it's just gonna go down and when i release it it's gonna go back up Just a triangle and when i release it gives is giving us the modulation all right so super cool so uh remember for now i'm just gonna go to the first one right here now remember that this one again is a gate is not a trigger so let's say that i want to let me bring up uh, the pink one i'm gonna be connecting the uh, the gate in which is the instruction and notice that right now when i touch the tip is opening and then it's closing when i you know stop touching it but as soon as i keep it pressed it's gonna keep the gate open so it's like us you know doing c 
something like that, right? So all of this again, it's just voltage. Now what we can do, maybe if we wanted to, we can use the old trick that we've been using, just connected uh, here, and notice that now I play something and nothing happens. And it's because, again, this one controls how the volume goes out. If we connect something to the gate in, we are disconnecting uh, it from the synthesizer. So we can control it some other fashion. In this case, I'm using the attenuator. So when I go up on the attenuator, is opening the gate and just closing the gate. Right? So now again we are again what we are doing, we are disconnecting the gate from the sin from the keyboard and just controlling it manually. Alright, so let me just maybe give you a more useful example. Let's say that uh, maybe we want to open and close the gate uh, rapidly, you know, open and close, open and close. So we can do it with the LFO, right? That's with the rise and fall. This is, you know, something that we uh, we, we did, you know, in a, uh, a minute ago. So I'm going to be reusing the uh, rise and fall. So remember, this is the gate, the instruction, when it opens and when it closes. So we want to use the rise and fall. So I'm going to be doing plus in this case, uh, or you can do minus, it doesn't matter. Now we are connecting, uh, connected right there. Now remember that the the, uh, the rise and fall needs an instruction in order to begin. So I'm going to be using the end trigger, right? So I'm going to connect it right there, and then I'm going to be connecting it to the trigger. Now the envelopes are super long, which is fine, but now this one is super fast, and I'm just going to be changing the envelopes. Now, maybe I'm going to go down in the mod just a little bit. Maybe change the ratio to something more musical. There we go. So now, the rise and the fall is just controlling the opening and closing of the gate. Now, I'm going really slow if I go faster. We can control it with that. Now remember that we can do this on demand if I wanted to. I can connect something right here and just use the attenuator just to, to have some fun, right? So I'm gonna be connecting it right there. And then I'm gonna go super fast. And then slower. At the end of the day, and for now, I'm just gonna boom, disconnect it. Uh, what we are doing again, we are just opening and, and closing, uh, closing the gate. All right, so I'm gonna be going all the way down in this ones and all the way down in the attack. I'm gonna keep the mod all the way down, and we just get the dumb sine wave. I'm gonna go all the way up on the LPG. And now, what we need to do, we need to do, we need to talk about the dual LPG that we we get right here. Now, we already talked a little bit about this one. Now, how the uh, how the LPG works uh, here is that it needs a signal, and that's going to be the uh, first one. It's going it's going to be the first in right here. That one. That is the signal in. Now, what do I mean with signal? So remember, it goes from the source, it goes through the envelope, and then it goes to the LPG. So the signal is going to be whatever sound that goes out from the oscillators. So if we interrupt that connection and we connect something else, we are just gonna be interrupting that connection. So if I play something and I patch something in and I touch it, we interrupt it. So now it's not listening to the oscillators, but it's just listening to my finger. Because we are interrupting the input that is by default going to the first one. Now, then the second thing is going to be, you know, the second in is going to be the level. That's the second thing that it needs. It needs a sound source, a sound, the oscillator. And the second one, it's how it's going to be working, how it's going to work. And that's the job of the job of the envelope, right? So the second in is going to be the envelope. If I play something and I patch in something to the envelope and I touch it, is that it's just working a little bit weird. And I'm just kind of interrupting that behavior. Now, the main point of all of this is that we can use different, uh, you know, different instructions, maybe different oscillators, or maybe some other instruction to control how the level works on the low pass gate. That's the plan. And at the end of the day, you have the out, which is, you know, the sound that comes out after it goes through the low pass gate.
you get to, and of course, don't worry, I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. So you uh, get uh, the first low pass gate and you get the second one. Now the second one, it's not connected to anything, but you get a second one and this one is completely equal to this one. The only difference is that this one is pre-wired to work with, you know, the rest of the synthesizer and this one is not connected to anything. Now on the uh, cards, you know, when, when you buy this, you get a card like this. So you have a basic patch, which is gonna be modulator as a second and VCO, I'm gonna use that example. So remember that we have the carrier and we have the modulator, right? So we have the uh, main triangle and then the other triangle that it's re working as a modulator. Now, everything goes to uh, through the low pass gate, the first one. But what we can do, we just can split that signal and connect it to the second one. So I'm gonna be just doing that. So I'm gonna connect the this one, which is going to be the first out, not the second out. And this one, remember, is the modulator, is not the carrier. And I'm going to be connected, uh, connecting this to the second low pass gate. Now, remember, we, this is the sound source, this is the level, and then it's the out. So, since this is a sound source, I'm going to be connecting it to the first. So now, the modulator that, remember, we cannot hear it, well, we can hear it only works as a modulator, now it's going to go to through the low-pass gate. Now, the other thing that it needs, the low-pass gate, is uh, a level control, you know, how it's going to be working. So, on uh, the first one, it uses the envelope by default. Right here, we don't have it by default, we need to do it manually. So, we can reuse the same envelope that we've been using for the number one, I'm gonna be connecting it right there. And I'm gonna be connecting it to the second one, which is gonna be the level of the low pass gate. So now if I play it, that is what we get. And we have nothing right here. Uh, maybe you're gonna go down in ratio, but it doesn't matter right now. So this is what we get. If I chop this, if I go all the way down, we just get the triangle. And it's just the default path. As soon as I go up on this one, we are blending whatever that comes out from the carrier, I'm sorry, the modulator. And still using these controls, we're still affecting the carrier with the modulator. Now the only difference is that the modulator goes out and now it's going through the second low pass gate. It's gonna be blended or mixed with the first low pass gate and everything else, you know, the default pre-wiring, and then it goes out, that's it. If I go all the way down, we just get the dumb sine wave. And if I go up, we get a combination of the uh, modulator and the carrier going out. So we get a dual VCO. If we, you know, if we find the sweet spot with the ratios. A little bit of folding. So you can get, again, really cool sounds, a little bit loud. Maybe a little bit of reverb. Right, so again, a really, really cool thing. The fact that they gave you, or they give us a second LPGs, uh, LP, a low pass gate, it's uh, super useful. So then, of course, you get the out. Now, uh, this is going to be the sound that goes out. Now, everything that goes out has some voltage, and since the sound will go out, I'm not going to use it, I'm just going to, you know, connect it. This is going to contain some information, so maybe you can use it as a modulation source in some other places. This is why you get the out. Now, uh, remember that with the... I'm going to disconnect everything. So, uh, with the low-pass gate, you know, with the, the first one, and the second one, if we do something, what is con being controlled, what uh, controls this low pass gate is going to be the envelope. Maybe what happens if you want to disconnect or overwrite uh, this and we want to use the rise and fall? Well, we can. We just go to the rise and fall. We can do, we can do positive or we can do negative. It's completely, you know, up to you. And then I'm going to be connecting it to the signal. No, it's going to be the level. Right, so we are overriding the level with the rise and fall. Now, remember that the rise and fall needs to start, needs to trigger information, so we can use the end trigger. And I'm assuming that you've been watching the whole guide. If uh, not, you're gonna be a little bit confused. So now, the rise and fall is just, you know, controlling the low pass gate. Right, so I'm going to go back to default, uh, all, all the different knobs, 
and we just get the dumb triangle. I know it's this is boring, but I'm uh, by doing this, I'm making sure that we all stand on the same place. Now we need to talk about the split and the split is going to be this section that you have right here. And this is one of the most useful sections uh, of the, uh, you know, the whole synth. And it's because it's a utility. So let me just give you an example. Let's say that you want to use the rise and fall to do some kind of modulation, but you want to modulate it, um, use that modulation, you know, the rise and fall onto different places. So you cannot do it. You can only do one single place or maybe do plus and then do minus and do the opposite on the other place. So you cannot, you know, do it twice unless, you know, you uh, use the split. So that's the main purpose of the split is going to extend or give you an extra uh, out so you can, you know, uh, modulate some other things with the same source. For example, I'm going to be using the LFO, maybe I'm going to be connecting uh, this to, I'm going to go this uh, to the rise and fall, and I'm going to be connecting it to the first of the split. So now the split is receiving the output information of the LFO, so it's just getting the information. And I'm going to make it loop just like we've been doing so we can use it on some other place. I'm going to use go, go to the end trigger and just make it trigger. So when I play it... Let's see if we can get it to, you know, somewhere around there. So now this one is connected to the first split, to the A1. So the A, you know, when we connect something, then we have two outs. So this is what it does. It's called split because it's going to receive this. And then instead of getting one out, what we get right here, we get two outs. So we can use uh, the same modulation on two different places. I'm going to connect this to here. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm going to go to uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Maybe uh, not that one. I'm going to go maybe to the ratio so we can see it going up and down when we use the, you know, the rise and the fall, right? So we can see it going. So now we are just pretty much doing the same, but now we are doing it with the split. But now the benefit is that we can take the out of the A and I can just maybe connect it to some other place and have the same modulation. So now we can, you know, we have it in two different places. Really cool, right? And that's the main purpose of the split. Now, you have the A and the B. Now, there's no difference between the A and the B. Uh, whenever you connect something to the A, it's going to duplicate that source. And whenever you connect something to the B, which is, you know, the one below right there, that one, is going to, you know, duplicate that source. All right, so that's it, you know, and that's why it's called a split. Uh... Because you input one and then two come out, just like Gremlin. And maybe I should, I'm just referencing a, movies from, a movie from the 90s and you have no idea what the Moai or what a Gremlin is. Uh, if you don't know, just go to the web and just, you know, just uh, look it up, you know, dive into the 90s. Okay, so now we need to talk about the Woggle. Now, the Woggle is a sample and hold generator. It's a random modulation. By default, it's connected to the keyboard. So if I play something, at some point, it's going to be outputting the light. It's going to show you light first. So this means that this is outputting some kind of information. And it's trigger, you know, the trigger is going to be every time that we play a key. So since this works as a sample and hold, uh, I, first, I need to teach you how, you know, what is sample and hold and how it works. And it's going to be a little bit impossible to sh really show you from here. So let me take you to the DAW and give you a more visual way to understand sample and hold. Okay, so I'm right here on Bitwick and I have something prepared for you. So uh, we need to talk about this sample and hold. If you don't know, if you already know how it works, you just need to skip this section and, and you know, just move forward to uh, the Woggle section. So, okay, so sample and hold is a random generator. It's usually uh, associated with uh, noise. It uses a noise uh, to generate its randomness, let's say. So a uh, sample and hold needs three different parts. First, it needs an input, a sound source, or some this kind of information. By default, um, in old synthesizers or, you know, whatever synthesizer, sample and hold, it's going to be using noise. Why noise? Because it's an unpredictable sound source. So since the uh, sample and hold, what it wants to do at the end is to output a random modulation, noise is kind of a, a perfect choice because it's unpredictable. 
So right here, I have a sample and hold generator. I have a noise generator, and then I have a clock. I'm gonna explain why, how you know how this works. So then the noise, if I connect it right here, we can see it. We can see on the spectrum that this is just noise, and it's unpredictable. So the sample and hold will love this. So I'm gonna be connecting this to the input of the sample and hold. Then the sample and hold needs to output some kind of information. And notice that right now is not doing anything. And this is because sample and hold needs to really know when to generate a random. So the sample and hold needs a trigger. Just like, you know, when we were discussing the rise and fall, when we need a trigger to let the sample and hold, you know, let the rise and fall know, know when it needs to uh, start over. Well, this is the same thing. Now, the trigger is going to take a snapshot from the uh, unpredictable sound source, and then it's just going to be generate is going to be generating a random behavior. So the trigger could be a clock, could be a different sound source, could be whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to be using this module, which is going to be called clock. So this one is going to use be as a clock, like an LFO, right? Let's say an LFO, and it's going to be taking snapshots from the unpredictable sound source. You can go slower, or you can go really fast. And then we can see that sometimes it's going to be going up, sometimes it's going down and up and down. So this is sample and hold. It takes an unpredictable sound source like noise. It's going to be triggering with a clock. And when it triggers, it outputs some kind of a random information. It could be positive or negative in value or voltage. And then what we can do, we can connect the sample and hold out this instruction that we see right here and modulate something in a random fashion. That's how it works. Now, if I um, let me just build a pretty simple synthesizer right here. I'm going to bring a filter and just going to be connecting this to, the, to this. Maybe an ADSR, a simple envelope, something maybe like that. And I'm going to be connecting this. And then this at some point, it needs to go out. So I'm going to be bringing an out. All right, so I'm going to be connecting the audio out. Now, I don't have a keyboard connected, so I'm going to be maybe using this keyboard. So if I play something, it's a little bit too loud. So I'm going to do something uncommon. I'm going to be connecting the mixer right here. So I'm going to go down in volume because I just don't want to go to the track right now. So if I play something, you know, it's going to go. If I go down, we get just pretty much nothing. But we just get a synthesizer, right? Just, just a synth. Maybe change the shape and so on. And if we change the filter, you know, we are going to be affecting the filter. Now, the main point right now is that we want to use this random, um, you know, modulation to modulate things. So I'm going to be bringing, uh, this is the modulator out. So now this, notice it's listening to the random instruction. This is why it's blinking. So I can just maybe go right here and connect it behind the scenes to whatever is the F I want. So if I play something, we are going to be getting that random, you know, modulation. Now, all of this is just to show you how sample and hold works. Now, we need to go back to the modular and do it from there. Now, one more thing that you need to remember is that sample and hold could, could be whatever you want. Right now, we are using noise, which is, you know, the usual way. But maybe I just don't want to use a noise. So I'm just going to go and just remove this one. I'm going to be using maybe a different sound source. You can even use an LFO if you wanted to. Let me just bring an LFO. So I'm going to be connecting an LFO. So now when you connect something, and uh, maybe I'm going to be doing something like this, so it's more predictable. And I'm going to do, uh, you know, bipolar. So now just take a look at the waveform right here. So it's super predictable, right? So this is the whole point. We use noise because it's unpredictable. So sometimes it's going to be up, sometimes it's going to be down. But with an LFO, it's always the same instruction over and over again at a rate. So it's always going to be the same instruction. So now the modulation, it's not random. It's super predictable. So you could use as a sample and hold input whatever it is that you want. Okay, so now that we know how a sample and hold works, this one is going to be really simple simple to figure it out. Now, this in the first one, it's going to be the uh, source, the input source. By default, if you don't connect to anything, it's just going to be noise. And again, if you don't know, you, you just don't have a clue how sample and hold works, just go to the previous section. I explained everything there. I'm not going to explain it right here. So the first input is going to be, you know, your, your input source. 
source, your source. By default, if you don't connect anything, it's just this one. It's going to be noise, this one. So then remember that you need a clock to, you know, take the snapshots from the unpredictable or predictable sound source. So this is going to be the clock. By default is going to be the keyboard. The keyboard is the one triggering the snapshots. So when I play a key and I keep playing, sometimes it's going to light up and sometimes it will not. And this is because is generating that sample and hold for us behind the scenes. Again, this is why we are getting that. Now, right here, then you have the outs, and you have two types of outs. You have the uh, smooth random or the stepped out. So the first one is going to be like a super hard, you know, type of, uh, you know, modulation is, go is going up and down really hard. And the other one, just like you can see on the drawing right here, is smooth, is have smooth curves. So the modulation is going to be, you know, just a little bit different. Now, this is something cool that maybe you can use with sequences, but maybe, you know, we can um, use it with the rise and the fall. Maybe we can just make a trigger uh, it like that, but you know, just connecting this to something, maybe going to the out and maybe going here just to do something. As soon as I play it, knowing that that is it's doing the modulation, it's outputting, and sometimes it's gonna be up, sometimes it's gonna be down. And this is what we are gonna be getting out of the woggle, which is again sample and hold. Now, what if we want to change the trigger? Because now it's triggering when we play a key. Well, we, we can use whatever you want, but maybe we can use the rise and the fall uh, as a, you know, because it's an LFO. So we can just make a trigger. So I'm going to use the plus, you know, to trigger. And we're going to be connecting this to here. Right. So this is the input of the trigger. Let me grab, you know, a different cable. And I'm going to be making the you know, uh, rise and fall trigger like an LFO. So it's going to go over and over and over. There we go. So now notice how the this one goes. So the time that is going to be controlling this is going to be this one, right? Now, if I play it, we get, you know, the sample hold. By changing whatever value we have right here, we are just, again, modifying whatever it is that we are doing. If I connect it to the smooth, it's going to be a little bit smoother. That's why it's called smooth. So, notice that it sounds a lot smooth, smoother. Right? It's completely different. There you go. Right, so it depends on what you want to do, what you want, what you want to use as an instruction. All right. So that's going to be the woggle. Now, by default, the uh, sound source is going to be noise. You can change it to whatever, whatever other thing. Maybe you want to use the oscillators out and use that as a sound source. Maybe you can use the LFO out. You know, the uh, the rise and fall to use that as a sound source. You can if you wanted to. Okay, so let's just, you know, I'm going to remove everything and we're going to keep moving forward. So we are back to the dumb sine wave. Now we need to talk about the utility that you have right here. And it's going to be the, uh, the A plus the B and then the C. Now all of this is just pretty simple. It's just a very simple. So you have an A source, you know, an A input. Then you have a B and then the C is directly connected to this knob, this attenuator. So C is going to attenuate the B. Now, when nothing is connected to the B, that's how we are possible, you know, we are able to connect to the output and maybe use this as an attenuator. If nothing is connected to the B, uh, this is going to output 3.3 uh, voltage, you know, volts in terms of voltage. That's why, we, you know, we, we can use it as an attenuator and go up in voltage and down in voltage. But uh, the idea is that you can connect something to the A, something to the B, and then it's going to do A plus B, and it's going to output some kind of a, you know, some kind of a, some, a voltage. It's going to uh, output something. And then with the C, you just, you know, you can control all of that uh, because, you know, it's just ruling on top of the A and the B. And then the other thing is going to be the same thing, but it's A minus B and then times C. It's just the same idea, but backwards. So let me just give you an example. So let's say that I want to use that, you know, sample and hold. The, 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 sorry, not sample and hold. The rice 
uh, at Rise and Fall, and I want to loop it. So I'm going to be going to out from the Rise and Fall to something like that. And I'm going to be maybe going to the B. Why not? I'm going to go to the B. I'm going to make the, uh, the Rise and Fall loop. Uh, I'm going to take the out, you know, the end, and patch it into the gate. So if I play something, you know, like that, nothing happens because we are not really connecting this to, you know, anything. So now we know that the rise and fall, it's being looped and it's going to be outputting some kind of information. So I'm going to be connecting the A plus B and then the C, right? So I'm going to be grabbing and just connecting it to, to the first one. And I can connect it to, you know, whatever it is that I want. So maybe I'm going to be going to, I don't know, this one. There you go. Maybe, yeah, I'm just going to stay right there. So this is the fault. Now, I'm going to be doing something not super aggressive. So now, remember that we are using the rise and the fall. We're going through the path, and then we are just outputting it. And this is just going to modulate this. Now, this one, remember, it works on top of the A and the B, so we can attenuate the rise and the fall, something that we couldn't do before. Right? When, well, before, when we connect this directly out to something, it's just a full modulation or no modulation at all. But right now, we just can decide the amplitude of the LFO or the rise and fall and decide if we want something super aggressive or maybe we want something less aggressive. Right? So that's, again, that's the, that's the plan. Now, then you have the A and the B and whatever you connect right here is going to modify or alter whatever modulation you're trying to output uh, right here. So maybe we can connect to the A. I'm going to connect something to the A. And we could use, again, whatever we want. Uh, maybe we can use the Woggle, right? Why not? I'm going to use the Woggle. Now remember that the Woggle will react to the changes. So notice that when we play it, and if I disconnect it, let me just disconnect it, the modulation when I play a key, it's pretty much the same. But now, since we are adding uh, this, this randomness behavior, it's going to be summed to the B, and at some point, you know, we are going to be getting a different thing. Now, we can even record the sequence, something like, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. And that's, that's it. And if I play it... Right? So maybe I'm going to be adding a little bit of release. Now, if I just connect the, uh, the woggle, it's just completely different, right? So again, it's a way to just blending the different mod sources and then just getting one output and just doing modulation. Right? Pretty simple. If I do the minus, you know, the other one, just the same idea, but, you know, backwards. And remember that the attenuator will pull you apart right here. Alright, alright. Now we're gonna be creating sequences and learning how to create sequences in a minute. Alright, let me just stop this. So guys, I'm gonna disconnect everything and go all the way back to the beginning. And we have the dumb sine wave, yes. Okay, so now we need to uh, discuss the space out and, the, you know, the last uh, parts. So the space out is, uh, we already talked about this one, is the output section and the reverb section. So, uh, but you do get, you know, two ins and one out. So the one is going to be whatever, uh, you know, signal path that you get right here. And it's going to be, you know, the sound source going through the envelope, going through the, the low pass and then going out. So if I connect something right there, we are just interrupting whatever is that, you know, we are trying to do. Maybe this cable is just not that good anymore. So if I connect something right here to the in and I play something, I'm just interrupting, interrupting that and we're just getting pretty much nothing. Now I'm going to go all the way down on the reverb and I'm going to maybe show you one example, a different example. So the number two is the level of the reverb, all right, the space out. I'm going to be connecting the envelope and when I play it, notice that it's modulating this. Now I can be adding a, a little bit of attack and a little bit of release. And what it does is going to go up as soon as I play it. And maybe I'm going to do the opposite, go to the negatives. And now it's going to be all the way up. But when I play it, it's going to go down. And as I release, it's going to bring the reverb in when I release the keys. So it's a level of the reverb of this amount knob. 
Okay, so now we need to discuss this section right here at the top, which is going to be, uh, you know, like the sequence. It's something that really works, uh, shines with sequences. So, uh, we don't have a sequence. I'm going to be creating one. I'm going to delete everything that we have. And we, again, we are going to be learning how to create sequences. I'm going to be recording one single note sequence. 16 steps of the same note. All right. I'm going to be getting out and just playing it and maybe adding a little bit of release and we just get that so the main point of this is that this one is going to be outputting uh, something at some point and notice it says four then three then two and then one and then we have a gate and we have a pitch okay so i'm going to be connecting this to the four and now this one will send an instruction uh, and it will kind of a trigger every beat so if i go here and maybe connect to something uh, maybe not to that one that is what happens so we have a 16 and we're going to that tempo this one is four so it's going to be one on each beat it's one two three four one two three four and it's outputting that now the other one is going to be triplets so it's going to be you know triplets so you're going to get six on each 16. now the other one is going to be half so it's you know it's going to be faster one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so on and so on. So it's going to be faster. Now, the other one is going to be a gate. And this one is going to output on each step. Every time that the key, a key or, you know, key, a, a, a key plays on the sequence is going to output the trigger. And that's what we get. Now, the other one, the last one, is going to be the pitch. Now, the pitch... Yeah, let me just stop it first. Holds information, holds voltage. So if I play a low key, that's going to be a voltage. And if I play a high key, that's going to be a different voltage. Right now, if I play it, it's going to be stuck on, always on the same place because we are playing the same note over and over again. So what happens if I record something else? So let me just go there. We have uh, I made a mistake right there. I'm going to delete it and delete everything. Right, so we have nothing. I'm going to be doing recording and we're going to learn how to do this in a minute. I'm going to be recording a low key, a high one. A low, high, low, high. And so on and so on and so on. I think we are done. So now, since we are playing a low key and a high key, notice that the, the value of the note is uh, creating a modulation. It's just outputting some voltage. So this is just, you know, modulating. So if I add different keys with different values, it will just, you know, modulate it with different values. So that's why you get a pitch. And the last thing that you get, let me just stop it, is going to be the tempo. And this is going to be is the tempo offset. So let me just play it. So it sounds like crap, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to be connecting it to the attenuator. So notice that I can go faster. So this mess with the clock, messes with the clock. I go faster, or I can go slower. Right? So you can maybe connect something else right here that is going to affect the sequence speed. Right? So it's going to go faster or slower, faster or slower. Maybe an alpha or whatever it is that you want to use. Right? So that's going to be, you know, this section. Right, so last but not least is going to be the CVN. You can patch something else, maybe a different synthesizer. And then you have the outs, which is, you know, you can grab whatever other other source and just use it on this, you know, device. Now, in terms of how it works, I'm not going to, you know, bring a different synthesizer. Uh, you will need to go to the manual. Go to the manual. It's, you know, it's very short. And right there, it's going to give you information about the voltage specification uh, there in the manual. All right, so up to here are the different modules. We talked about all the different modules and we know how to make them work. Now we need to learn the rest of the synthesizer, which is going to be creating sequences, deleting and the scales and so on and so on and so on. Now, if you want to know, uh, you want to you know explore presets or examples, go to the web. You have a million places with the million presets for the uh, modular. All right, so let's talk about creating sequences, loading sequences, and, you know, all the other features that we have right here at the bottom. So, okay, so first we need to talk about loading and saving. So you can store up to 16 sequences right here, and to access the sequences, you will need to go to memory 
press the memory and it will just, you know, let you know on which sequence you're standing, on which pattern you're standing. And we're standing on the number one. Now what I can do, I can maybe load the pattern number three. I guess we will have something right there. And if I go to a different pattern, maybe I can go to the number seven. And we're standing right there. I'm gonna go back to the one which is pretty much nothing. So holding the function when you're standing on the pattern, when you're standing on the number one, holding the function, you can uh, tap on the 16 and the 16 is going to clear all the steps. So right now we have pretty much nothing. So I'm gonna be clearing, we have one single step, but still I'm gonna be tapping all and this is gonna clear the whole pattern. So now we have nothing. Now still, when you do this, this doesn't mean that you are deleting, uh, you know, the pattern. Let me just go maybe to the number five. I'm gonna be, playing something and you know we have some sequence going on on this one so if i do funk and i do all it's going to clear the sequence so it's you know it's not there anymore we are just deleting the steps now this doesn't mean that you're erasing if i go out and go back and i play it back again we, we just get it back so what you're doing when you do function 16 you're just clearing the sequence but you're not really uh, storing or just saving it to the memory if you want to save it to the memory, let's say I go to maybe the uh, step, you know, the pattern number one, where we have something dull. I'm going to be clearing all of this, and I want to store this nothing patch, you know, this nothing pattern uh, to the memory. Now, to save it to the memory, you just need to hold the function and then go to memory. And notice that everything starts blinking right here and it's going to show you the 16 patterns that you have available so now you need to select where you want to save it now i want to save it on the number one because i was standing on the number one but you can save it on other places so i'm going to tap the number one and now it's saved if i play it back we just get nothing if i go to a different patch i play it and if i go to that patch again you know that uh pattern again we uh committed that uh pattern to memory All right so on this device you have two main ways uh, to record sequences i'm gonna be standing on the pattern number one and if i play it back we have nothing okay so we can do step recording and live recording first i'm gonna show you how step recording works by doing function and then rec you know holding function and then doing rec the rec and the function will start blinking and this will stand you on the first step now you can do that good old you know step recording that you can't do with any other sequencer so if i play a key it's going to record it to that step and it's gonna be advancing through all the different steps so with the keys that we play so if i play a key and i play different keys every time i play a new key is going to advance one step and so on and so on and i'm right now i'm just doing something random it doesn't matter once you're done it's going to be looping so you to get out of the step record mode you just need to press function and it's gonna get out if i play it back we just you know we just get it. maybe i'm gonna do a little bit of a release so we can we can get something normal all right so that's how it works super simple now i'm gonna be uh maybe going to a step record again so you have two more functions that are really useful so now we have a sequence with notes right all the steps have notes if i do play if i press the play it's gonna let you advance to the next step and it's not deleting anything it's just advancing to the next step but it's letting you hear what you have inside of that step right so that's what's going on right now if i keep playing it's gonna keep advancing until you know we are done and then it loops back to the beginning now this is what you can do with the play now if you want to replace what you have on the number seven for example uh when since you're standing on step record you just can you know play whatever other key and that uh, step will that key will be replacing whatever thing that you had on that step that's how it works now this is not a polyphonic synthesizer it's a monophonic synthesizer so you can store only one key per step so if i get out of the funk you know of the step record and i play it back you know we get something now another function that we get on the step record is that we can when we advance let's say i want to delete that one i don't want it i just don't want anything right there so pressing the record is going to clear the information you have for that step and then maybe you can advance i'm going to be deleting the six and the seven and just advance a little bit more delete the 11 12 and 13 and just you know maybe get out 
and notice that those notes are not there anymore. So the rec will just remove them. All right. All right. Now, this is one way of recording, and for now, I'm just gonna start over. I'm gonna do funk and then clear all. Now, when you do this, and this is a, you know, kind of a, I wanna say warning, this is how it works. If you clear a sequence and you do play, if you regret doing this, you can do funk and then tap alt again, and you're just gonna get it back, right? So it stays in memory until you make changes. So if you make some changes and then you do funk all to restore it, uh, it's not gonna work. Right, so you just need to immediately kind of a restore it. If not, it's just no, it's not gonna do it. For now, I'm just gonna do funk and clear all because what I want to do, I want to live record. I'm gonna be going to the rec, I'm gonna press it and notice it starts blinking. So it's a waiting for me to press a key. And as soon as I do so, the recording will start. And then you know the sequence will start playing. Now, when you are live recording, whatever it is that you play is going to be, you know, stored on whatever step you're standing or, the, you know, where the playback is. And if you had a note from before, it's just going to be replaced by the new note. Right? So, I don't know, you know, I cannot get easier than that. And one more thing that you need to be aware of is that, you know, right now if I play something, it's gonna be standing right there. So the five and the six are your octave, you know, buttons or controls. So I'm gonna be doing function and if I do up, you know, the number six, when I play it, now it's gonna be one octave up. And it's just, you know, moving or shifting the keyboard one octave up. If I go down, it's gonna go down to the middle. And then if I go down, it's gonna be down one octave. So, you know, this is just, you know, a standard, you know, uh, octave control. A couple more things. So right now, let's say I'm, I'm going to be playing this and maybe just do it a little bit more release. So the funk and the ratio right here has a special function. If you press the function and you keep holding and you, I'm not going to do it, but uh, if you move the ratio, this is going to offset the tuning of the oscillators 50 cents up or 50 cents uh, down. So it's like a fine tuning. I'm going to do it. But, you know, you can do something like this by holding the funk. And another thing that you get right here is the step number 10. The step number 10 is going to be the gate. By default, it's not long gate. So if I press it, notice that the steps are just much longer. And if not, they're just going to be short. So this is a way just to make the gate longer for each step or just make it making it uh, shorter. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna start over again, and I'm gonna be maybe doing step record, and I'm gonna be recording whatever, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna be doing some playing back. So you have a function called step, uh, active step. So uh, you can, you know, notice that it says active step right here, I'm gonna show you what this means in a second. So the active, active, uh, active step, what it does, is just gonna disable uh, some steps. So I'm going to be doing function and notice it says active step. So I'm going to do function and I'm going to be doing play. So this is going to take you to all your different steps. So what you can do with this one is just remove the steps that you don't want to be played. And this, what will do, it will not uh, add a rest. It's not that. It's going to skip this step. So if you have a 16, um, you know, steps, a pattern and you remove or you de uh, deactivate one of these steps, you have a 15 steps, uh, you know, pattern. Now, if I play it back, notice it's going to be a lot shorter. If I, if I do something like this, something really obvious, notice that we only get this. But what we can do, we just can make variations of the pattern. Notice it's super fast. It's because we have a lot less steps. It's not adding rests, it's just skipping. So we are just deactivating that step. That's how it works. Now, right now we have a lot of non-active steps. So you can go to function and notice it says oh, the 15 is active step. So this is what we'll do. It will just re-enable all these steps back to on. Right? So again, this is just a, a, another way, you know, just a, a way of adding a little bit of variation to your patterns. Like um, you would do with polar rhythms, for example. If I do active step, it's just going to bring them back everything on. Cool, right? 
Okay, so let's talk about the scales. So if you take a look at the, right here at the bottom, you have the names of the scales. It's chromatic, major, minor, uh, you know, so on and so on. You have a lot of scales, which is, you know, really cool. So how can you lock to a scale? So you need to go to function and you need to press the number one. And notice the number one says scale. So when you do scale, it's going to send you or just, you know, put you in scale mode. So now you need to select the scale, the scale you want to work with. Right now we are standing in chromatic scale, but maybe I just want to select a different scale. So I'm going to be selecting, I don't know, I'm going to be selecting a minor scale. Uh, why not? I'm going to be selecting that one. So now the keyboard is going to work on a minor scale. I'm going to do funk to get out of the, you know, the scale mode. And now the whole keyboard is going to work as a minor scale. Now, uh, the root for any scales, um, you know, scale, it's really important. So this lets you select the tonic, you know, the root, which is, again, something really cool that you don't get on a lot of uh, sequencers. So by doing function, you can enter the tonic and it will just, you know, give you a bunch of options to select the tonic. Right now, it's standing on this one, which is going to be a C note. So maybe I want to make it, I don't know, I want to make this one. I'm going to make an F. Why not? Why not? So, so uh, once you're done, uh, you just need to do funk. And now we are doing minor and we are doing on a key of F. So if I play it back, of course, we have nothing. But whatever we record now is going to be uh, within, the, the, within the boundaries of that scale. Now, uh, how it works right here on other sequencers is a little bit different. Just a little bit different. Uh, on other sequencers, when you do use a scale mode, uh, when you play a key and you play a, a different key that don't, doesn't belong to the scale, it's going to be playing the same tone. But right here, it doesn't do so, it doesn't do that. What it will do, it will remove all the notes that don't belong to the scale. And remember, we are using the uh, minor and we are using the tonic of F. So if I uh, play something, you know, we are just going to be getting that. And whenever you record something, everything else or everything that you record is going to be within the boundaries of that, you know, of that scale. Now, can we change the scales on the go? Yeah, why not? I'm going to go to scale while this is playing and I'm going to be change, uh, this, changing the scale to, I don't know, something else. And notice it changes. Gonna be changing it to something else. Exotic. I'm gonna do funk. I'm gonna go out and change the tonic. It's gonna change your scale. So you can record something chromatically, let's say, and then change the scale and change the tonic. And you know, just see how it works. For you. If it works for you, cool. Right. You have another thing that is called microtuning. And it's going to be right here. Notice it says micro tuning and then it says edit and then it says clear. Now, this is something cool because you have all the different scales right here that you can use, but the micro tuning will let you offset whatever key to something else. So you can kind of uh, create your own scale. Now, to enter the micro tuning, you're going to need to go to a function, hold function, and then go to the number three. And it's going to show you all the different notes that you have uh, for your, you know, on your scale. So, what you can do right now, you can maybe, let's say I want to, that's going to be, you know, the edit, but this one is going to be the first. Let's say I want to maybe take this one and change the tone, change the tune. So by pressing and holding right here, you have your micro tune. So this one will offset it and just, you know, move it to a different pitch. So right, just like this, you just can, you know, offset whatever scale that you selected. So now it's going to be <laughs> a little bit weird. But you can, you know, create interesting micro tunings. Now, if you don't like this, you know, you did it and you just don't want to keep it by going to function and then clear is going to clear the micro tuning. And same thing with functions, uh, with scales. If you want to go to scale number one and then go back to chromatic, and then maybe again back to the root, you just go back to C and that's it. You just go out with the funk and you're back to chromatic. It's super simple, super simple. All right. All right, so let's just, you know, finish with this. So you have a, a couple of randomized options. You have the note, the active step and the micro tunings. So, you know, uh, it's pretty simple. Let's say I'm just playing something. Let me just record something that, you know, something easy. Uh, to here, I'm going to be going chromatically up so we can easily recognizing, we can recognize that we are going up in, you know, in the keyboard. 
So when you go to funk, you can randomize the notes. And this is just gonna randomize it. Right? Really cool. Now the other one is going to be active active step step. So by doing function, it's going to turn off and on some some steps. Alright? It's just randomizing the active step. If we take a look at the up to the active step, it's just removing that one and removing that one. Right? So we can do it again and see what happens. We're gonna go back, and now we have different active steps. Now remember that always you can do function and go to active step, and now all of, all of them are enabled. Alright. Now the other one is gonna be, you know, micro tunings. If you're using, you know, scale and it's on, it's just gonna. Now, does it sound a little bit weird now? So yeah, it's just offsetting all of that. But that's fine. Now remember that you can clear the micro tunings by going to clear, and it's just gonna clear it. So all of this, you know, all the synthesizer, the uh, the, you know, the sequencer part, and everything is super simple to understand. Most of the you know, the complexity uh, with this uh, synth is, is, is this section, you know, this part at the top. Maybe not so much of the sequencer. It's just very simple to understand. Now we have something going on. I'm gonna be clearing all, and I'm gonna be recording, uh, you know, chromatically again. It doesn't matter if I, you know, if I miss. If I go up and I play it, it's just gonna, you know, go down and up. Pretty simple. So now, if you keep moving forward right here, you have a couple more options, and they have a, you know, they have weird names. It's going to be bounce and stotch or stoch or whatever you want to call it. Right, so if I uh, go to function and then uh, enable the 12, that is what happens to the sequence. It's going sometimes forwards, then back, then forwards, then back, and then just advances and goes back and advances and goes back. So this is what this mode does. So when it's uh, playing and it's going to a new step, it has four choices. It's to move forward, skip one forward, go backwards, or repeat the same step. But on every step, it's just, you know, kind of a throwing a dice, just doing a random option between this, uh, you know, a random selection between these uh, four options. And then, you know, it's just maybe it's going to move forward, maybe it's going to go back, maybe it's going to skip step, and so on and so on. So it's just like a random. Now the other one, not the stock, if you want to disable it, you just can hold function and disable it. The bounce is up and then down. So it's a forwards and backwards uh, with, with the playback, right? With the sequence. So that's it. And if you want to disable it, you just, you know, go to bounce and disable. Alright, so the last thing that we need to discuss is, you know, something that all Volkus have, which is the motion sequence. It's just pretty simple. I'm gonna make the gate uh, for this uh, a little bit longer. I'm gonna go to the gate and just play it back. Something like that. Maybe we can try it with, you know, with the shorter, shorter gate. So what we can do, we can record, and when we record, we can just record the motions of the different knobs and you know, just record it. This is motion sequence. This is something again very normal on uh, very standard on all the Volkus. So you need to turn motion sequence on and off. Right now, the function right here it says 13 on and off, and below says motion. So right now it's on. If uh, if this is uh, like this off, whatever you record is not going to be recorded. So I'm going to be and going to on and turn it on. Now the the way this works is that you need to live record, and when you do so, when you enable record. And then maybe play. I'm gonna be playing it. I'm gonna do it. You know what? I'm gonna do it short. I like it a little bit more. I'm just gonna add a little more release. So when I record, I'm gonna be moving knobs and it's just gonna be recording that those movements to the sequence. I'm gonna be doing record. And we can see that it's just recording it. This is again something super uh, normal with all Volkus. Right? You can go crazy right here. Maybe I'm gonna be going to a little bit of modulation right here, you know, with the mod. I'm gonna do this. All right? It can create really cool sounds. All right? Now, what if you don't like what you just recorded? Now, you can clear it. So if you go to function, you have the clear on the 14. I'm going to be doing function and doing 14, and it's just clearing everything. Right? So that's how it works. And if you want to record it again, everything starts over. You record. 
and it's just going to be a recording, and so on, and, and so on. Right? Super cool. Right. Now, all the transparent knobs are the ones that can be modulated. The only one that the, the only one that is transparent and that cannot be modulated is going to be the clock. Now, the black ones you cannot uh, motion sequence them. All right, so that's it. That's pretty much the whole synthesizer. If you liked all of this and you learned something, please like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you just, you know, maybe want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks, you can go to the links on the description. You have links uh, for PayPal. You have uh, YouTube thanks and you have Patreon. Maybe you can be a one month patron and just buy me a coffee that way. Why not? All right. So see you on the next one.